Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have decided today to sit down and film this video because after a recent trip to Walt Disney World, I have gotten so many messages on Facebook that have asked about what we did, what would they recommend, where did we stay, and I have a lot to say about our first trip. It was definitely an experience. So I've decided to sit down after I've made some notes with my husband and talk about the entire trip. That way, if you guys are planning a Walt Disney World vacation, especially if you've never been before and you have no idea what to expect, this will help you hear from our experience and make better decisions than what we did. This trip was taken at the end of January. We left January 25th, 2020 and arrived home February 1st, 2020, I believe. Those were the dates. The reason we picked those dates is because I had heard that that was the slow season, which I'm starting to think doesn't exist anymore at Walt Disney World. I think that people are starting to catch on, and it was pretty crowded. I don't have anything to go by, but I do feel like it was not as much of the off season as what I had heard and the main reason I picked that week. Another reason I picked that week is because of the weather. We didn't want to go during a time when it was so humid and hot that we were going to be miserable. And we had heard that this time of the year it was actually pretty good. The week prior to us getting there had actually had a huge cold spell. And I had read a lot of things saying that that was the one week of Florida winter. That that was it and it was in like the 30s so the two reasons we chose that week were crowds and weather it also kind of for us didn't matter what time of the year we went tristan's not in school i could take vacation at any time and so could aaron so that was another reason we chose january this trip was myself my husband and our two and a half year old son we live in Virginia and we decided to drive down. We figured flying would be a little too much since we had never done that either. So we wanted to stick to just one new thing, which was the Disney vacation. So we drove down from Virginia and on the trip down, we decided to split it into two days. We left on Saturday, January 25th and we drove down through North Carolina and South Carolina and we stopped halfway about halfway in this town called walterboro walterboro south carolina what we did was we just drove until we didn't feel like driving anymore until it started to get dark and we started to get tired and hungry and i just went on hotels.com and i picked a hotel that was right off the interstate picked one stopped and um reserved the room from the hotels app and then stopped there so our first mistake was that we didn't really have that planned out. We tried to wing it and I regret that because by the time we were like, okay, it's time for us to stop, um, let's pick a hotel. We were in the middle of nowhere and there were no good hotels. I was looking on the app and they were 20, 30 minutes still away and then they had horrible reviews. And I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna stay in a nasty hotel last minute so we had to drive a little bit further to get to a decent hotel at that point we were very hungry we were very tired of being in the car for six or seven hours and we stopped at a cracker barrel next to the hotel on a saturday night that was kind of a mistake as well because it was packed it was about 7 p.m tristan was hungry and tired we were both hungry and tired by the time we got to our seat and waited for our food we were all getting grumpy and we barely ate and enjoyed our food. It wasn't very enjoyable. So we get to the hotel room and Tristan was pretty wild because he'd been in a car for seven hours. So he was wanting to jump on the beds, jump on the floor, run around, and we were on the fourth floor. So I'm pretty sure the people below us got a little aggravated and could hear him jumping because I really think I heard someone kind of like knock I don't know, maybe we were just worried because it was getting to be 9 p.m. at this point and we had to settle down. So we spent one night in Alterboro, South Carolina, and we had the breakfast included in the hotel that day and we just slept until we slept. We didn't set really an alarm or anything. We woke up, we packed up, and we left. And we wanted the second day to be a little bit shorter of a trip than the first day. And I think that we did that. From what I remember, the first day was about seven hours and the second day was more like five hours, I believe. That's the way I recall it. 
So we left from that point in South Carolina and finished the drive to Florida. We stayed at Port Orleans Riverside and we received um, the text that our room was ready. I did the online um, you know, self check in through our magic bands. So I got a text at about 3 p.m. that our room was ready and we arrived about 3.30. It was almost right when we got in Orlando that I got the text. So we bypassed the front desk and we went straight to our room. It took us a few minutes to kind of get um, oriented to the parking lots and find our spot, but we ended up par having a parking spot right outside of our room, basically around like a corner or two. And we immediately went to our room and checked in and that was pretty neat getting to bypass the front desk. Our room was beautiful. It was recently updated from my understanding that everything at Port Orleans, especially Riverside, had been recently renovated in the last couple of years. It was very clean, minus some dust on some shelves. And for the most part, it was great. We were very happy with it. So at this point, it's 3.30 p.m. We are ready to go. We're getting excited. We have our magic bands. We're checked into our room. We kind of bring our stuff in and start unpacking. We have reservations on day one on arrival at 6 p.m. at Disney Springs for the restaurant Homecoming. So I had heard a lot about this restaurant. I watch um, the Tim Tracker and it's one of their favorite restaurants. And I thought it would be a really fun way to kick off our trip at Disney Springs without going into a park that day and to just kind of walk around Disney Springs, shop, eat at our um, reservation at our restaurant. And I also knew that there was a bus that left Port Orleans Riverside and took, or not a bus, I'm sorry. I knew that there was a boat that took you straight from Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter to Disney Springs. So I, again, I thought that would be a fun thing after being in the car all day. So at this point, it's probably 4.35 o'clock and we're on the boat to Disney Springs. The weather is really great. It's sunshiny, it's about 60 degrees and we get to Disney Springs. The boat took about 30 minutes. We get there and it is so crowded. I guess I didn't think the fact that it would be a Sunday night and right around dinner time, but it was packed. I feel like we were kind of rushed to get to our restaurant, not necessarily. I think we were like 5.15, 5.30. So we were um, ahead of schedule, but by the time we realized where our restaurant was based on the do boat dock, we didn't have time to shop. We basically just straight went straight to our restaurant. So at this point, again, we're tired and we're hungry, but we're also excited to be there. We get to homecoming, we check into our reservation at about 10, 15 till six, which is what time our reservation was. And we had to wait 30 more minutes before our table was ready, which was kind of one of the downfalls about this trip was the reservations and the time. So I'll tell you about that each time. But in this case, we got there 15 minutes before our reservation and we still had to wait another 30 minutes. It was almost 6.30 before we actually were seated. So at this point, we're getting frustrated because Tristan doesn't understand waiting very much and there's not anywhere really for us to sit. It was too cold to sit outside and wait. There was a couple chairs inside for us to wait, but we're basically just trying to entertain him until we can get to our seat. We finally sit down and start to order air food and Tristan is starting to have a little bit of a meltdown. He, again, like he did the night before, he's hungry, he's tired, he's frustrated about being in the car all day and not being he's not really been able to run around and get his energy out like a toddler should and by the time we order get our food do all of that stuff it just felt like it took forever and it kind of took the enjoyment out of it it was not a relaxing meal the other thing that kind of went wrong is because we had well the guy told us because we had done the self check-in and didn't check in our front desk and it was our first time using our magic bands at that meal, other than checking into our room, there was an error and he had to actually take my magic band, go manually put in the number in his system and that's how our credits went off. We did have the dining plan and we had the mid-tier dining plan and that was gonna be a table service credit that we were using. So we were all kind of getting a little frustrated. We were tired, hungry. We ate a little bit. I got um, a delicious meal. Aaron's was really great. Tristan got, I think, fish sticks, but they were more like little fish bites and he wasn't into it. He was kind of over it at this point. He was getting sleepy and we were trying to entertain him with our cell phone and he, trying to get him to sit down and calm down. He was starting to kind of cry and have a meltdown. 
it really wasn't that great and I think I took two bites of my meal and I was just over it so once we were kind of settled and we ate what we were gonna eat we calmed down and we took Tristan out and we left. I really wanted to shop, I'm not gonna lie. I wanted to walk around and enjoy the evening and just kind of stroll around, but I was cold, I was tired, and the only store I really, well, there was a few stores, but the main store I wanted to go into was this one called Uniqlo. And, well, it was packed in there, and all I wanted was a little sweatshirt to wear, so I did buy the sweatshirt, but it took about 20 or 30 minutes to get my sweatshirt and to check out. Aaron has Tristan over in a stroller over to himself kind of trying to walk him around and keep him happy while I'm shopping and at that point we're like let's just go back to the room this is not worth it we're tired let's just leave so we got back on the boat and went back to Riverside and overall I regret that I wish we had not planned any reservation for the day we got there I wish that we had just maybe explored the resort more and ate at the quick service at the resort and not really felt like we had to leave and go somewhere and probably even just went to the playground at the resort and let Tristan run some energy off and play and been a little bit more casual about it and not felt like as soon as we got there we had to hit the ground running. So that was a long-winded day one. Well travel day, arrival day. So the first official day in the parks was Monday, January 27th at this point. The weather again was really great. It was cloudy and kind of overcast in the mornings and by the midday the sun came out and it warmed up. So it was like in the 40s and 50s when you would first wake up and then by midday you were looking at upper 70s. So we wore jackets and by the midday we were wearing t-shirts. On that first park day, I didn't want to run in, into any kind of bumps with our magic band after what had happened the night before. So I went to the front desk and I wanted to double check that everything was good with our magic bands before we went into the parks. And because of that, we walked to the front desk from our room and got that checked out, which took about 30 minutes, I feel like. And we decided to take the bus from the front lobby. That was a mistake because by the time we did that, we walked to the front desk, we went to the front bus stop, and we waited. We got there at about 7.30, and it was almost 8 o'clock before our bus arrived. And I was under the impression the buses came every 15, maybe 20 minutes. So I must have misunderstood that because every day it was closer to 30. So we were already at this point late for our first reservation, which was at... Um, Epcot, we were going to Epcot that day. It was at Garden Grill at 8.25. So I wanted to be on the bus by 7.45. That gave us more than 30 minutes to get to Epcot and then um, get there. But it was closer to 8, 8.05 by the time we were on the bus. And by the time we got to Epcot, went through security. Luckily, because we had a reservation before the park opened, we did get to go into a special line and kind of bypass the people that were waiting for rope drop. And that helped us out a lot. And we basically beelined to our restaurant. So we didn't even really get to enjoy the fact that we were in there before everyone else. We got to the restaurant right at 8.30, so we were five minutes late. Um, and almost immediately was seated. We really, really liked Garden Grill. They had this big, huge, delicious sticky bun cinnamon roll. It had uh, its family style where it's all you can eat, but they brought the food to you. So that was really helpful with Tristan. It was also a character meal, and this was his first experience with characters. And I it kind of went about how I expected it to go. I felt like with him being seated and them coming to him, it might be something a little bit less scary than us waiting in line and then walking up to them and him chickening out. And he still chickened out. Um, he kind of freaked out and hit his face and didn't want anything to do with them. We even had to kind of switch spots at one point. He was on the outside where the characters were walking by and I decided to me uh, to go in that spot and let him sit on the other side where I was kind of a buffer between them and that helped a little bit. Um, we saw Pluto, Chip, Dale, and Mickey. Mickey was the very last one 
and by the time Mickey came around, he had warmed up a little bit, but he was still very shy. What was so funny is that when we walked in, we walked right past Mickey, and he was like, hi, Mickey, hi, Mickey, and he was so excited and looking for him, but then as soon as those characters walked to our table, he flipped out. He didn't, like, scream or cry. He just got very shy and hid his face and didn't want to have anything to do with them. But the meal overall was great. I would highly recommend it. It was in this really cool restaurant that was right between um, kind of two rides and the actual restaurant itself rotated. You can look it up. It's really cool. Highly recommend. So after Garden Grill, we had a fast pass for living with the land, which you don't need a fast pass for living with the land, especially at 9 a.m., 9.30 before the park really opens. But I was limited on the amount of fast passes I could use that didn't have height requirements for Tristan in Epcot. And I knew that living with the land was right next to the garden grill. So I decided to just go ahead and use that fast pass. So we scanned in and we walked right on. We didn't need to use a fast pass at all. We could have just walked right on. But again, we were limited for what he could do. I wouldn't suggest it. But if you want to just get right on the ride, then do that early in the morning. After living with the land, we walked out of the land pavilion and grabbed our stroller, which that's another thing. Definitely take your stroller. Um, there are stroller parking spaces everywhere. The only aggravating part is that you feel like you get in the stroller, move it 100 feet, park the stroller, get your kid out, ride a ride, and move the stroller. It's just like a little bit of in and out constantly, but they have stroller parking at uh, designated places for a reason, and it is really helpful. So we walked out of the land pavilion and saw that Nemo was a 20 minute wait and we didn't have a fast pass for it. So we walked right onto Nemo and it was not even a 20 minute wait. I would say it was a 10 minute wait at this point and it's about 9 a.m. Eh, not 9 a.m. Probably closer to 9.30, almost 10 at this point. So we rode Nemo and when we came out of Nemo, there's the aquarium. We walked around it for a while. We decided not to do turtle tuck with turtle talk with crush because we didn't know how tristan would sit and just watch like a show at that point and we felt like we wanted to explore a little bit more and we had a fast pass for spaceship earth at this point somewhere i think it was around 10 to 11 was our fast pass time and we walked to spaceship earth got in the fast pass line it was almost walk on I feel like we still had to wait in line but the line was constantly moving so it didn't feel like we actually waited maybe five to ten minutes from the time we checked in got onto spaceship earth and I really enjoyed that ride that was really cute and fun and it was I knew that it's going through um refurbishments this year so that was a must for me and at that point it is getting to be after we did spaceship earth we walked around and just kind of explored and you know wanted to see what we were going to do my thought was that we would do at least half of world showcase and um we started to walk around world showcase and we're starting to get hungry at this point because by the time um we're talking 11 30 12 ish and we didn't really know what to do um we had the dining plan and i wanted to use snack credits for this lunch or that was my plan and they had the festival of the arts going on but the food at the festivals are just a little bit out there for us and i knew that tristan wouldn't eat it and we were kind of stuck we really didn't know what we were going to do so i got a snack of the churros that are like dipped in the white chocolate we had that and a bottle of water i used sna two snack credits i swore to myself i would not use a snack credit on a bottle of water but i didn't know what else to do and we had those and we were all kind of starting to get tired and we couldn't decide if we should do nap in the room or not. Since it was our first day, we decided to do nap in the room. Um, we felt like we could go back to the room, take a break, have a nap, and then come back out for our last fast pass and finish the day out. And we would all be in better moods because of that. So we didn't make it far around the World Showcase when we decided, let's turn around, let's go back to the room. We got back to our hotel, settled in. I think they had not cleaned our room at that point. It was like one o'clock and um, we settled down by the time I got Tristan to actually settle down. It was almost 30, 45 minutes. He finally fell asleep 
and I had to set an alarm for an hour later because we had a fast pass. So we took our nap. I think all of us kind of laid down and closed our eyes for a few minutes. I had to wake Tristan up from his nap that he finally took and we were headed back to Epcot for our frozen fast pass. I believe it was from 3.20 to 4.20. At this point it's like 3 o'clock and we get on the bus easy peasy. There was a bus stop not far from our room and right outside of the parking lot where we had parked our car. So that was the first time we used that bus stop and it was much nicer because, well, it was the middle of the day and it just seemed like there was less people because I think it was the second bus stop. Anyway, we got on the bus, we headed back to Epcot and we kind of went through Future World, I believe is what it was called because we had a little bit of time to walk to our Fast Pass. And we were hungry because, mind you, we hadn't ate lunch, really. Tristan ate some snacky stuff in the room and ate those churros. And we got a pretzel with the melted cheese. And we used um, a snack credit for the pretzel. And we sat and we enjoyed a pretzel. That was kind of our lunch. And then we headed to our Fast Pass for Frozen. We pretty much walked onto that with the Fast Pass. We loved that ride. And we just walked around World Showcase. We stopped in at um, the Voices of Liberty, which is something I wanted to watch, but it just so happened that when we were walking by, it was the last show of the day and it had just started. So we hurried and ran in there and um, tried to watch Voices of Liberty, but Tristan wasn't into that because it required being quiet and sitting still. So we just listened to like one or two songs and then went back out. We finished walking around World Showcase and happened to walk up to just a surprise pop-up where Mary Poppins was somewhere. I think Alice was right next to her and then Goofy was doing a little meet and greet. So we stopped and took a photo with Goofy. And then we got Tristan the famous light up bubble wands and just kind of circled back around. At this point we made it to the front and I had, since we'd used up our three fast passes, I got on the app and it was showing that Figment had a 40 minute wait. And I was shocked because I thought, Lord, this really is busy if Figment has a 40 minute wait because everybody said there's like no wait for that. So I grabbed a fast pass for it and then by the time we got to Figment, signed in their fast pass, it was a walk on. It said 40 minutes on the sign outside and on the app. But there was no one in that line. Anybody could have walked right in and walked right onto it. Um, it was a little bit of a weird ride, but it was cute for Tristan and where it had like the sounds and the smells. I liked it for him. And at this point, we had realized we had ridden every ride that we could with Tristan and didn't really have any like shows that we wanted to watch. And it was starting to get dinner time and we didn't know if we wanted to eat in the um, park we kind of that was the problem with lunch there was nothing there there was so much there but we didn't know what we wanted to eat and it was never close to where we were and it just wasn't practical for Tristan to find something to eat I don't know I think we could have found something at any restaurant they probably have chicken nuggets at everything but at this point we were tired we had done a full day we were ready to get back to the room and we went back to the room and on the way on the bus, I got on mobile order and ordered some cheeseburgers and like a pizza for me, like the like a slice of pizza from mobile order from the restaurant at the hotel. And we got off the bus at, I feel like we got off the bus at the main lobby and picked up our mobile order and took it back to the room. I highly recommend that mobile ordering was awesome. We took it back to our room, we ate in our room, and we settled down for the day. Forgive me for looking down at my phone so much, but this is where my notes are from what we did that day. So at this point, it's day three, second day in the parks, and it is our big day. It is Magic Kingdom Day. We had an early morning reservation at 825 at Be Our Guest, and from the day before, we knew that the buses were going to be a little bit late. So we tried our best to get to the buses before 7.30, but we got there right at about 7.30, 7.45, maybe. I feel like it was 7.30. And that was the worst bus situation the whole week. 
we were the very first people at our bus stop so it makes me think that they had just had a magic kingdom bus that left when we got there so i kind of hate that we missed it but we were the first people at our bus stop and by the time we actually got on the bus it was almost 40 minutes later and it was packed the bus stop was packed everybody was going to magic kingdom there were buses for animal kingdom epcot hollywood studios like two and three that would come for each park and people would get on but everybody seemed to be waiting for magic kingdom so at 8 15 when the bus showed up and it was already standing room only and tons of people were trying to get on the bus eric car was right there and we decided let's just ride our car we're going to be late we have 15 minutes or so to get to the reservation we're probably better off to just drive ourselves that was a big mistake we had never done that before and we didn't realize that magic kingdom after you already pay and park which i knew we had to pay after you park you have to ride either the monorail or the ferry so that was a huge mistake so we drove ourselves we hopped in our car and we're like we're late that's all right though we've got our own car it's fine we're cool we get there after we pay after we park and we didn't really understand where the parking lot was so after we got on the stroller out from our car we walked to the front and they were loading up a tram so we got Tristan back out of the stroller got onto the tram the tram drove us literally a hundred feet like we could see our car and then they stopped and we got out and we were like that was pointless and then we got through security and realized we have to go to the monorail or the ferry so I saw the ferry and they were loading people so we're like running to the ferry they closed the gate right in front of us so we're one of the first people in line for the ferry, but we have to wait for that ferry to leave and a new ferry to come in. At this point, I'm really stressed and really frustrated. I think when I was on the tram, I started to call uh, reservations and try to back to try to see what I could do. Try to call and see if I could tell them we're running late for a reservation. Can you move it back? Because I was afraid we were going to miss it and they were going to tell us, "Tough luck, you've missed your reservation." So I'm trying to email my travel agent. I'm trying to get on the reservation call. So I didn't even get to enjoy the ferry boat ride. I was stressed out the whole time. And it was like, you have a 30 minute wait. So at this point, being on the phone with reservations was pointless because we were gonna be there before I could even talk to someone. We get on the ferry, I'm trying to email people, I'm trying to get on there and we walk into Magic Kingdom and I'm just stressed. We're just like booking it. We didn't even get to enjoy walking into the Magic Kingdom. It had already opened at this point. It was like 9.05. So, by the time I weaved and was like five feet ahead of Tristan and Aaron, and he's pushing the stroller, and I'm weaving through trying to figure out where Be Our Guest is, we get there almost a full hour after our reservation, and I was stressing out. I was like, I'm sorry, we're here, we're late. And she was like, okay, just go on in. So, they didn't care that we were late. So I was stressing out for really nothing. Get in there and we still have to wait in line. I get that though, we're late. Maybe that maybe if we'd got there at a reservation, we wouldn't have had to wait. But it still took another 20 minutes by the time we actually got in to order. And then we had to mobile like order on a screen and scan our magic bands and pay and use our credits there. And then they someone seated us and then they brought our food to us. At that point, I'm like, okay. That's done. Let's enjoy it. We're in Magic Kingdom. We're at Be Our Guest. We're here. Let's enjoy it. Our food was okay. Um, I wouldn't say it was anywhere near the best meal that we had that trip. It really wasn't that great. The service was pretty quick. I feel like um, it, because it was a quick service, they were kind of, you know, go, 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 trying to get you in and get you out. I didn't feel rushed, but it did feel pretty quick. And it was beautiful in there. All right. After Be Our Guest, we had Fast Passes for Peter Pan. We immediately got onto that with the Fast Pass. Luckily, our Fast Pass times, we hadn't missed those. We got onto Peter Pan Fast Pass, Winnie the Pooh with the Fast Pass. They were both good rides. And then we rode the Carousel, which we loved. It was a little bit of a wait. And we rode Teacups without a Fast Pass. It was maybe like a 20-minute wait. But Tristan loved the Teacups. And then we went into a couple of shops. It was very sunny. And we got sunglasses for Tristan in a little shop. 
So I mobile ordered through Cosmic Rays. I believe that's what it was called. And at this point, we started to walk to our next Fast Pass, which was Buzz Lightyear. We stopped and took some photos by the castle on the side. There was a photo pass photographer who didn't have a weight at all. We took some photos there near the castle. And then we had a Fast Pass for Buzz Lightyear and got onto it fairly quickly. And we decided to do another um, back to the room for nap midday break. And I should not have done went back to the room because Tristan ended up falling asleep before we got to the room. I feel like I think he fell asleep in the stroller from what I remember and woke up on the bus. So we pretty much went to the room for no reason. I couldn't get him to go back to sleep once we got to the room, but it was nice to kind of calm down, settle down. I think they had cleaned our room at that point. Just kind of took a break, freshened up a little bit, and headed back to Magic Kingdom at, so this is like three o'clock, two o'clock break, back to Magic Kingdom at about four o'clock. We had a reservation at 555 at Liberty Tree Tavern. So when we went back for the second half of the day to Magic Kingdom, I tried to kind of take my time and take it all in, walking in this time since I didn't get to enjoy Main Street the first time. And I wanted to get a souvenir, which you can actually see right here above me, Tristan's um, silhouette. And they have a little cart in Magic Kingdom. I knew it was there. I saw it um, earlier that day. And um, we stopped to do that. It was about a 15 minute wait for them to get to us. And then it took another 15 or 20 minutes for her to actually do it. So, um, by the, and by do that, I mean, it took her like two minutes to cut it, but by the time they put it in the frame, checked us out, did all the things, it was almost a 30 minute thing. And at this point we're getting, cutting it close. It's like 530. We have another 30 minutes to get to Liberty Tree Tavern. I'm not too stressed because we're just taking our time walking. And right as we're walking down Main Street, the, what was it? Move It, Shake It, Mouska Dance It Parade starts going by us. And we just happened to be on the wrong side of the street from where our reservation was. And they wouldn't let us cross the street at that point. So we're like, whatever, we've got time, let's just walk. So we walked and got to the corner where you, the castle was right to the right of us and Main Street was right in front of us. And um, we enjoyed it from right there. It was actually really awesome that we got to catch it that close. We had a great view of it and Tristan loved it. We watched that and they started dancing. We enjoyed it for a little bit and then we realized we've got to go to our reservation. We're going to be late. So we cut across, had to weave through people, had to get across um, once the parade kind of stopped. And we got to Liberty Tree Tavern and we were 10 minutes before, our, 5 or 10 minutes before our reservation. And there was a little bit of a line of people checking in so I had to wait for them. And by the time I walked up, it was 6 o'clock on the dot, and our reservation was 5.55. I know that because there was a grandfather clock right behind her. And she was like, okay, it'll be about 25 minutes. And I was like, oh, well, we had a reservation. She's like, yeah, but you're late. And she just said it kind of like that. And I said, oh, well, we I've been here for like 10 minutes waiting to check in, just kind of waiting on people. She's like, sorry. So they were like, all right, we'll text you when your thing is ready. And so it was about maybe 15 minutes. We had to sit there and wait. They finally called us back and we sat down for dinner and I feel like it took forever compared to what it should have for a family style meal. The food was good, it was not amazing and again it was family style so I feel like the food should have came out to us almost instantly but we had a good little long wait trying to keep Tristan occupied and also wait for food and it just it was a slow experience and then once we actually got the food it was pretty good and um Tristan was doing his nightly thing where he was just over being in the stroller over sitting still and didn't want to sit still for dinner and kind of started wanting to get up and was like not really into his meal and I feel like I just didn't get to sit down and enjoy it so at this point I had we'd used three fast passes and as soon as I was in line for Buzz Lightyear at 3 p.m. I got a fast pass for Pirates of the Caribbean at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So I knew that we would be finishing up um, dinner at that point and we did. We finished it within that window and we walked straight through. It was a, like a little cut through to Pirates of the Caribbean and we got on it and it was almost a walk on. So we had a fast pass, really wasn't worth it. 
um, walked on immediately, came out and it was getting to be 7.30 at this point. We really liked Pirates of the Caribbean. I love that ride. We noticed that the park was definitely not as busy as when we had went in to eat because people were starting to line up for the fireworks. So it was about 7.40, 7.45 at this point. We knew the fireworks started at 8, so we started scouting a spot. And we just happened to find a pretty good spot and they just kind of motioned us and said, here's firework viewing over here, over here. And we got a fairly decent spot right in the circle, right in front of the castle. And we waited and watched the fireworks. A tip that I'd heard was during the fireworks, go ahead and get a minivan and don't ride the bus back to your resort because it's going to be crowded. Everyone is going to be leaving right after the fireworks and you'll want to do a minivan. That would be much more comfortable and much more enjoyable. So after the two days of a bad bus situation, I decided that that's what we would do. I talked about it and I was like, yeah, I think that'll be fun. So I order the minivan before we walk out of the Magic Kingdom and I go, we go straight to the minivan location and it like the app never registered that we were there. It never actually, it just was like looking for vans, looking for vans and kept waiting and waiting and then it would kick me out. So I got back on it again as we're sitting there waiting for the mini, like the designated minivan pickup spot and it kept kicking me out. So I asked the guy, the family in front of us in the minivan spot, I said, did you get one? He was like, no, my app keeps messing up. Another family comes up behind us and I was like, hey, we're having issues with the app. Are you? And he's like, I can't get a minivan. Like it keeps kicking me out. There were about four or five families total that all had the same exact problem. None of us could get a minivan. So one person already had a minivan when we first got there and I kind of flagged down the minivan driver and I was like, hey, you know, do you guys know if the app's down or anything because we're having issues? And she was like, um, I guess it does that when there's not a place nearby. There's not one nearby, sorry. And you could tell she really didn't know. So I thought that was a little bit ridiculous. You would think that you would know after fireworks, Magic Kingdom, they're gonna need minivans close by. They need to have enough. And again, I was told to do that. So I feel like it shouldn't have been that hard to find a minivan. Like that was something that was expected that you should be able to get a minivan. And I kind of expected a wait, but I thought it would be more comfortable in a minivan to wait on that and then get in that instead of the bus. I think we waited for maybe 30 minutes and we finally gave up and got frustrated and was like, let's just take a bus. Tristan was asleep at this point. He fell asleep in the stroller um, while we were waiting for the minivan and walking out of Magic Kingdom. So we got on the bus and it was standing room only. We were packed in there and Tristan was asleep. So Aaron was holding Tristan. I was kind of help, trying to help him hold the stroller and we were standing. That was really aggravating because first of all, I feel like someone should have been nice and let Tris Aaron sit down knowing that he was holding this like completely heavy baby and they didn't and it was miserable. It was like the longest trip back. It just felt like it was oh, the bus situation. Y'all don't even know. All right. So I think I'm going to end this video here because I know that it's long. I know I've cut stuff out, but I can tell that it's already going to be like over 30 minutes, maybe even 40 minutes long based on my timer. And we'll pick up um, in part two with Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios and then how our trip was overall and what I would do differently. So if you guys want to see the second part of this video and see what else happened in our week, be sure to subscribe to this because it's going to be coming next and I don't want you guys to miss out on the rest of our trip. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.